Hello everyone, you're welcome all of you to worship service in the name of Lord Jesus Christ in a spirit and in truth. All right, it's the right time for us to cleanse our heart that has been defiled by our iniquities, the sin, the transgressions, you know, anything uh, not inside of the word of God, you know, whatever we broke the law, it is a sin that we have to confess to cleanse our heart, okay? To worship God in spirit and in truth. In spirit means only born again Christian can worship God because only those who have Holy Spirit that is that are the you know children of God can worship Father. All right? And in in truth means should be sincerely, okay? Without any force. Because, you know, and two or three of us, you know, gathering together in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, the Holy Spirit, who came from by God in the name of Jesus, presented among us, so that we must, you know, take care of ourselves, you know, purify our heart, okay, through the blood of Jesus Christ and the words of God. All right, before we hear the sermon, uh, shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we are here together to worship you, Father God. We know our Father God is looking for those who worship God in spirit and in truth. We want to worship you in this way. Please cleanse all our things. Anything is out of your word, okay? So we want to cleanse by your blood. And also the water is inside of your words today. To see the glory of God, we believe the Holy Spirit is presented among us. Open our eyes, open our ears, so that we may see the glory of God in the form of the Holy Spirit. And also, we should be able to understand your words. So that we may be keep those words, and so observe the word, and so we just, you know, protected by your words uh, so that we dwell in peace, Lord. Thank you, Father, in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, um, today's the sermon to meditate before we hear the, hear the message. It is a Psalm 47, verse 1 through verse 9. Let me read it for you. You can follow your eye with your eyes or you can hear. It's one word, one word, okay? Receive your words, all these words in your heart. The devil always right, try to steal the words, okay, from your heart, from your ears. Even before your words, you know, reach your heart, you know, the devil try to steal. Very, very careful. Or clap your hands, all your people, Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. For the Lord most high is terrible. He is the great king of all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us, send the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us. The excellency of Jacob, whom he loved, Selah. God is gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing you praises with understanding. God reigneth over the heathen. God sits upon the throne of his holiness. The princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of God of Abraham, for the shears of the earth belong unto God. He is greatly exalted. All this psalm is talking about. What this psalm talking about? It's talking about you know the kingdom of God to come, to be coming before our eyes pretty soon. The millennial kingdom reigning, being reigned by Jesus Christ. Then only one king in the earth. All the, all the Gentile nations will bow down to him. 
also people of Israel too. All this is prophecy, okay? It's a doctrine. All right, let me read in the main passage, the main scripture, uh, also uh, Psalm 46. Psalm 46. Let me read it for you also. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not hear fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. There is a river, the streams thereof, shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathens raises, the kingdom were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Come, behold the works of God of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh a way, he maketh word to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burnish the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathens. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Shalom. Yeah, God is asking, stand still. Now let the Lord be glorified. Let the Lord be exalted. That means if we, unless we stand still, there's no way our Lord God could be glorified for us. Listen carefully what it means. Somebody will take on you. How can you stand still? Can you do that? Well, you have to do that. In the words of God. The Lord God commanded the people of Israel not to fear in the midst of great tribulation, but to stand still so that God may be exalted among the heathen. Heathen means all other nations except beside Israel. Korea also heathen. America also heathen. Japan is heathen. Germany also heathen. Yes, all the nations and kingdoms except Israel, called heathen. This word is also applied not only to the people of Israel, but to the children of God, just like us, in this generation, because only God is our refuge and strength. Is it really so? Yeah, you'll find that. That is true. This scripture prophecies of the great tribulation to be coming to pass unto the people of Israel after we are raptured. We're not going in the midst of that tribulation, though. Uh, uh, what a blessing we receive through the grace of Jesus Christ. Uh, such a tribul tribulation has never been seen in any other generation so far. 6,000 years of human history. No such kind of tribulation never happened. But the earth shall be removed. And the mountains shall be carried into the midst of the sea. What a great earthquake is going to happen. Can I imagine? What is thereof shall roar and be troubled. Tsunami, right? Tsunami. How, mu how much dreadful tsunami, you know that? And a mountain shall be shaken with the swelling thereof. Even in such kinds of tribulation, the city of God, 
the holy place of Most High, that is called Jerusalem, shall not be moved. God shall help her, and there the right only. You know, in these days, Hamas, Hamas, you know, continuously, you know, just send the bomb, send the bomb to Israel, right? But they never target Jerusalem. You know why? If they do that, they could hit the Temple Mount. You know, that is a holy temple of Muslim. Now, that's the way God protecting Jerusalem, as, you know, said in Psalm 46, just we read. Yeah, God is so wise, smart, okay? Nobody can compare their wisdom to God. Not only environmental disasters, but also the heathen races and the kingdoms are moved. Go away. No more kingdom at all. Then God utters his voice. God makes his voice just like thunder. The earth shall be melted. It could happen when God said, they have a light, light was. Whatever God say, it will be done right away, less than in a second, okay? It is a power of creation. God create something from nothing. This is God Almighty. Do you believe God Almighty? Or do you believe yourself? According to what you learn in school, in science school, natural science class, philosophy, whatever, according to the words of your teacher in school, no way. The earth shall be melted, then the almighty God of the host will be with them to fight against the heathen that attack Israel. Yeah. Sooner or later, all the nation people will attack Israel. Bible says. And um, he will burn all their weapons. Jesus come, he'll burn all their weapons, even, you know, nuclear weapons. God never used, you know, you, you, uh, nuclear weapons to judge the world. Never. God never used, you know, the things made by man. God used his word. Whatever you say, it will be done right away. His weapon is his word. And the only one thing that they have to do is to stand still. Can you stand still in the midst of such kind of disaster? But God is asking you to do that. When you stand still, you are safe because God asks you to stand still. You know what? All the laws, including Constitution in America, many kind of, you know, words, you know, law, right? Civil war, you know, criminal law, many kinds of laws. Why? Government make that kind of law. If you observe the law, you are safe. If you don't observe the law, you are not safe. All the words of God is, you know, eternal law. Stand still, right? Oh, how can I stand still? You know, I have to escape to others, running this way, that way, fro and you know, fro, you know, all the way, you know, to avoid such kind of things. You move yourself is breaking the law. You are not safe because God asking you to stand still. You stand still. That's the way. You know what? Sometimes you know, airplane, jumbo airplane crash, right? But sometimes an infant only survive from that crash. Why? Infant stands still. But most of the people try to, you know, survive themselves. You know, that's why that's the way, you know, to die. Hitting each other, right? One another. Infant, you know, stands still. They survive. You know that? Last week, you know, one of our sister. Kunsanim, you know, got a car action total loss, you know, when she drove um, her granddaughters, one is, you know, 11, 11 months, you know, the Luna, you know that? 
and another one, seven-year-old, you know, granddaughter, they were sitting backseat. Nobody heard. Even children never heard, okay? Even the gunshanim, you know, gets some heart, you know, a pain in, in, uh, in, in, in the breast. But, you know, the, the, the infant and, you know, a small child, you know, get hurt. Never, never. They smiled when I reached there. They were smiling at me, you know that? Never surprised. I asked them, is it okay? Oh, I'm okay. No problem, they say. Because stand still. They were sitting still, right? Of the tribulation uh, that the people of Israel has to pass through in the future, Prophet Zechariah prophesy, and he also prophesied when such tribulation come to pass. You know, we read in you know, a book of Psalm 46, right? Many kind of gesture, right? Zechariah explained this when these things will going to uh, going to happen. Listen carefully. Behold, the day of the Lord comes, and thy spoil that shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses are riffled, and the women are ravished, and the harp of the city shall go forth into captivity. And Resist you of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations. And when he fought in the day of battle, and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst of thereof towards the east and towards the west, and there shall be a very great valley, and half a mountain shall remove towards the north, and half of it towards the south. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. Jesus Christ. Right? In that day shall there be one Lord, and his name one. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. You heard that, right? Can you understand that? The relationship between, you know, Zechariah and also Psalm 46. Yeah, so you need understanding. Prophets of Zechariah, just already read, okay, explains about the, when the prophecy written in Psalm 46 shall come to pass. Through the prophecy of Zechariah, we can see the things that shall happen at the war of Armageddon, when the Lord Jesus Christ judged the heathen at his second coming, at the end of tribulation. The Lord God will make all the Gentile nations attack Jerusalem. What interesting, right? Lord make, going to make all the nations attack Jerusalem. How he can do it? Yeah. Just listen carefully. Since God chose Israel as his own people, all the nations have been gathering together, persecuting the people of Israel, that is to be the people of priests for God in his kingdom. Finally, God will gather them together unto Armageddon to judge them. Yeah, to judge them. God will gather together all heathen so that they may attack Israel to judge them. Very interesting, right? Final judgment. Even the people of Israel have to pay for their sins that they rejected the Messiah Jesus and killed them. The half of the city of Jerusalem shall be in captivity under the permission of God. Now God will ask the Jews, you know, for their sins, you know, murdered, murdering, our Lord Jesus Christ, and also judge all the nations. Yes. That's why, you know, even though we are, we are saved, we are Christian, we sin, you know that? God will discipline and chasten us until we confess our sins. But we confess our sins, repent. God will give us peace. Yes. 
But the city of Jerusalem is promised to be in safety by God. After the final judgment against all the nations, the Lord Jesus Christ shall be king of the all the earth. In that day shall be there be one Lord. The reason why God allowed all these things is that God wants to be glorified finally among the heathens as testified by the psalmist. As we heard, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Right? This is the way of being exalted by God. A long time ago, about 3,500 years ago, when God took the people of Israel out of Egypt, it's called Exodus, right? Through Moses. He made the army of Pharaoh follow the Israel for him to be glorified after all. Even at that time, God asked the people of Israel, stand still. Moses, the man of God, testified of this. He said, And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Yeah, God hardened the heart of Pharaoh, right? Same thing. That's why in the future, God will harden the heart of all nations. That's why so that make them attack Israel. Same thing. And Pharaoh pursued after the children of Israel, and the children of Israel went out with a high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them. All the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them in camping by the sea beside Pihahiroth before Baal-Zavon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And Moses said unto the people, Fear you not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will shew to you today, for the Egyptian whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. That means God is willing to kill them all in the Red Sea. The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel uh, that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thine hand of the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will get, my, get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his host, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. Did you hear that? Yeah. God commanded the people of Israel to stand still, to stand still for him to be glorified among the Egyptians. God wanted to fight with the Egyptians for them, Israel. King David, the servant of God, confessed in his Psalms. He said, Remember the word unto thy servant, upon which thou hast caused me to hope. That means what? Whenever he, he obeys the words of God, he has hope on the words of God. You have to do like, you, 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 yeah, the same thing, right? If you obey the word, you have hope. If not, no hope at all. This is my comfort in my affliction, he said that. For thy word hath quickened me. Yeah, his word. When we receive Jesus Christ, you know, he just quickened us. He gave us eternal life. 
Yes. The word, only words of God endure forever. Right? All man is just like grass. The glory is just like a flower of grass, right? Grass withers, you know, flowers to fall. The words of God endure forever. What is hope? Something endure forever. That's why this way we cannot hope for anybody. Nobody can be our hope except Jesus Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, God. Yeah, our only hope is the word of God that is spirit and life. When we work in the words of God, we can be protected in his word that is the law of God. This is the very reason why we are supposed to be protected in the whole armor of the word of God in the present world that is being reigned by Satan for 6,000 years. Just know that. Yeah, somebody, many people don't know that, okay? So, oh, if God exists, why do all these things happen? Wow, oh, people are so wicked. Why too many words? You know, seeing that, they try to ignore God. Many philosophers said God is dead, all right? Not knowing Satan is ruling the of the world. Instead, you know, attributing all things to Satan, you know, people attributing all these things, the justice to, to God. What ridiculous. So weird. Since Adam and Eve, our ancestor, right, forsaken the word of God to follow Satan, there has been no hope in the midst of sin and death and curses without any comfort of God. God has continued to speak to the world through his servant with patience for 4,000 years. Even his own people have forsaken his words. God had never spoken by any word at all 400 years after prophet Malachi prophecy because they never, never listened to the word. 4,000 years, 400 years, you know, God never spoke to them. The Lord God, who was with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, appeared as a man in the earth after all. There's no other choice, you know, to save the people. He was the Word in the beginning, and He was with God, and He was God, the creator of all things. Only in Him was life, that means eternal life, that was the light of man. He gave the power to be, to be the children of God, receiving the eternal life. To whomsoever believe in him and receive him as Lord and Savior. God planned to bring forth his children through the Holy Ghost for the last 2,000 years. But God has had to allow his children live in the present world under the Satan as Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, until he comes. The Satan, the prince of the world, has been persecuting his people as well as the children of God without ceasing. It's the last, you know, for 2,000 years. But God has set the day for him to judge all the Gentile nations, heathen, that persecute his people as well as his children with long suffering. Whenever the people of Israel were attacked by the heathen, the Lord God commanded them to stand still. He also is asking the children of God to us the same message. What is that? First Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Yes. Unless you cast all your cares upon Lord Jesus, you cannot stand still. When you cast all your concerns, cares, unto our Father God, you can, st you can stand still. Yes. As Moses said unto the people of Israel, Fear you not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today, you shall see them again no more forever. 
God gave us a simple word, you know, to cast out all our cares unto God. Then God can do for us. And only God shall be glorified. Because he's going to do 100% something for us. Even 1% is not for us, you know, that not of ourselves. Then 100% he will be exalted and glorified. When we obey the words of God, we are able to have hope on his words. And even in the midst of tribulation, we are able to live in the comfort of the Holy Ghost. Only to have the hope on the words of God is to obey them. You know, God commanded the earth, saying, Let the earth bring forth grass at the time of his you know, creation, book of Genesis, right? Let the earth bring forth grass. You know, God commanded the earth, you know, bring forth grass. The herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. The earth obeyed all words of God. That's why, you know, we enjoy eating herbs, you know, vegetables and also fruits, right? Because the earth obeyed the words of God. Unless earth obeyed the God, there's nothing to eat, you know, miserable. Our heart is just like, you know, earth, soil. Our heart should be good soil, you know, to receive the words of God, to reap 140, 64, 30 fold. It was done as God said, you know, when we keep the words of God and walk in them, we can reap the fruits of the words of God. The fruit is to have peace from God even in extreme tribulation. And when we eat the fruits and praise the Lord in the midst of God's help, only the Lord shall be exalted and glorified. Just before the Lord Jesus Christ you know, departed the earth, he encouraged his disciples, knowing that that will be behind, okay? If we go to heaven, he just left his final word of promise. He said to them, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulations. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Amen. Whosoever has Jesus Christ in a dwelling within them. Yes. That can stand still. Because he give us, you know, peace. Unless you have a peace, you cannot stand still. That's why, you know, Apostle Paul encouraged, you know, Timothy, the pastor of a church. The spirit of fear is not given by God, but spirit of power and spirit of love and spirit of sound mind is from God. If you receive fear, you know, spirit of fear, you cannot stand still. You cannot trust in the Lord. That's the Bible says, examine yourself, whether you are in faith, whether you are saved or not. Don't you know by yourselves, Jesus Christ is in you. If not, you're forsaken. This is day for salvation, through receiving Jesus Christ, confessing your sin. If you're not sure, you example, now you repent that you have not really believed in Jesus Christ by all your heart. Call his name. Just like a one thief crucified with Jesus Christ. He just, you know, spoke to Jesus. Lord, he called upon the name of Lord. Lord, remember me when thy kingdom come. And Jesus said, verily, verily, I say to you, you shall be with me today in paradise. 
You know that? The Bible says, whosoever call upon the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved. Very easy. With all your heart. Because God is looking into your heart. You know, one of the things you see that, you know, the picture on the first page of the bulletin, right? You will see chariot of Egyptian steel seen right bottom of Red Sea. Yes, God just, you know, made these things, you know, for us. It's real, say it's real, right? Everything mentioned in the words of God is real. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us a message. We are going to stand still, whatever things happen. Our whole life, tribulation after tribulation coming to us. Teenager, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, whatever. As other people, we are going to pass through many kinds of tribulation. Let us be able to, this message, stand still. Fear not. Let the Lord Jesus Christ be glorified, exalted. We want to keep all these words up be stolen by the devil. Thank you, Father. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, amen.